Well, uh, I guess let me get started then with the, the S4 stuff. Um, yeah, I, somehow I feel a little unsatisfied with my understanding of S4, um, but, um, you know, kind of as with S3, it seems like it, the chapter kind of gave the general functioning of the class without giving too many, um, without giving much guidance on kind of implementation or best practices, that's kind of left to, to interested readers to pursue in other, other ways. Although at the end of the, uh, my notes, I did try to bring in an example I kind of find found in the wild or um, actually was pointed to through one of the, um, one of the exercises uh, in the chapter. Um, so what is what is S4? Um, uh, actually, I should, in the notes I'll post, I'll reverse the order of this, but it, you know, it's it's an object that contains, it, it feels a little bit, in honesty, a little bit like R6. So maybe now I'm seeing why the sequencing, we, we were debating this last, at the end of last uh, last week is like, why, why the sequencing of S3, R6, then S4. Um, to a certain sense, like in a certain sense, it feels a bit like R6 to me in, in that, you know, we have, uh, you know, what R6 called fields, data, you know, data fields, uh, they're called slots in uh, S4, uh, same general idea. Uh, and then you can basically attach, attach methods um, to, uh, uh, attach methods to, um, um, to your object, although the implementation of this feels a lot more like S, S3 than it feels like R6. Um, so in terms of kind of setting up the class and defining the class and then the methods associated with the class, there are a set of functions that we'll use and we'll go over each one of these in, in kind of um, uh, in, in, in detail and like a modest level of detail at first and then in a little bit more detail thereafter. Uh, so first, you know, set class sets up, sets up, it kind of defines the class, um, what, you know, what it consists of, um, its inheritance, if any. Uh, then you set up uh, a generic uh, generic function. So uh, remember back to S3 where we set up a, a generic function whose purpose is basically to dispatch to to the appropriate methods based on the class of the uh, class of the thing that, it, that, that that's being passed. So then we, we kind of define methods by by set methods. Um, so in, in this sense, like the, the setup with methods feels a bit like uh, our uh, or sorry, rather S3, uh, but kind of the, the form of the thing feels a bit more like R6. Um, be interested to hear what you feel after afterwards. Um, so on the, the kind of the basic overview. So setting up the class looks a little something like this. Um, so just, you know, set up the class. The name of the class is here. Um, let me make this a little bit larger. Um, and set up the class, so let's say, let's call it person class. Uh, and we have a list of slots. Um, so a name, which is a, a class character and uh, an age, which is a numeric class, right? So um, here you can just set up um, set up the class in, in, in that way. Uh, so in a sense, it kind of looks a little bit like R6 uh, on the insides in terms of the slots. Um, you know, these are, I guess, in R6 fields. Uh, and then you can kind of you as, as a developer can create an instance of the, of the class in the following way. You just use this, this kind of constructor function new, where you instantiate a new instance of the class person, and then you provide values uh, for, the, for, the, for the slots that define the class. Um, so you know, John Smith is the name, um, and then the age here is, is, a, is a, an NA uh, of type, uh, importantly of type numeric. Um, right, so this is how you can define the class in the most basic way. Um, you can then set up a set generics uh, that'll uh, basically kind of define what can be done with, with, uh, with the class. So here's just a, a rudimentary example of kind of setting and getting um, values of slots. So here we're looking at age. So this would be a, a, generic, a generic function. Um, uh, uh, for age to uh, get the value of age. Um, and then this will be a generic function to set the value of, of age. Um, so this is a, again, these are just generics to say that, you know, there will be some method or methods associated with these generic functions. And then we have to define the methods. 
Um, again, this is a very basic example where here we only have you know, one method per generic function. In practice, we may have multiple methods uh, um, per generic function, where we may anticipate you know, multiple, class, uh, multiple classes of inputs and need to have methods for each one of those, those classes. So again, you know, getting and setting. So um, uh, we can define uh, getting the value as a set the method. Um, uh, you know, the generic function that we're pointing to, the class uh, uh, of the thing, and then and then this is the implementation. This is the, the, the function. So here what we're doing is we're using this function x, uh, uh, and where uh, you see this at symbol, that's kind of the way in which to access a slot uh, uh, of, of our class. So remember, for our class, we had uh, slots name and age. In order to access them, you just use the, 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 at, the at sign. Uh, so x at age is the way to kind of uh, to get the current value of the age slot of of uh, of our object. Uh, and similarly, we can we can set we can define a, a method to set the value. Um, so this is going to be kind of the, the name of the generic, uh, the name of the class, and then the implementation. This is the the, the function component uh, where we'll basically. Uh, access the slot, uh, the age slot, so at age, and then pass a value to it, um, and then return the, the object. Uh, the, this will basically be the modified object where the, uh, the value will have been updated somehow. Um, so this is kind of it in action. Um, so you can set the value uh, of John. So this is uh, just to remember earlier, we use this kind of generic constructor to set up some object, some in instance uh, of this uh, person class, this person S4 class, um, uh, where, with the name of John Smith and no age. So now we're providing John Smith an age uh, of 50 years of age. So we have this age um, function, um, which is basically a generic. Um, and then we're uh, then behind the scenes, basically using the method for setting setting the age right here. So we're setting the age of 50. Um, and then we can get the we, we, can, we can get the age uh, as well. So again, we have this uh, this age function and then we're, we're getting the age and you can see the age is, is returned here, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is kind of the set, set up similar, I guess in style, I suppose, to S3 so far where we define a class, but the class is defined more in R6 kind of style where there's slots. We define a set of generic uh, generic functions that kind of you know, communicate an intent that we want to do something, but without the details of how we do that thing. And then we uh, uh, set up um, a set of methods <clears throat> that are attached to each one of the generics, right? That basically define the implementation per, per class of input about how, how to handle that, right? <clears throat> um, good. Um, this is kind of the basics. Now let's go on, I guess, to a little bit more of the details, <clears throat> some of the finer details of how this is set up. So we're going to add a few levels of complexity here. So let's come back to setting the class, but let's look now at how we would handle inheritance, right? So let's imagine we wanted to extend. Um, we wanted to extend, remember, uh, uh, the uh, the person class to be an employee class, right? Um, so uh, in R six, uh, you know, remember there's we have this this kind of inheritance, and, and in, in Trevin's example, you know, we have the banking account that we extended that class to be private banking account, and it performed it inherited some of the the, the attributes, some of the methods uh, uh, of. Uh, of, of the banking account class, but that it extended it in certain uni unique ways. So, and similarly, we're going to kind of set up, um, uh, define an employee class that, that extends the person class. So when you're basically defining inheritance here, you'll have an argument contains where you'll, you'll, you'll name the name of the class that, that, um, that this kind of extension class inherits from. So here we have an employee class that we're defining that, that, um, that inherits from the person, the person class. And so we're going to have an additional slot, right? So the slots we have before, uh, recall, are you know, the, the slots of the, of the person class age and name. Now we're also going to have a, 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 a boss slot. So who is the boss of this person? Um, 
and then the other thing that we didn't see before um, is is we can uh, uh, basically kind of set up a prototype of of the um, of the object and kind of uh, you know in a certain way like instantiate the object and maybe instantiate it with some default values. Um, so here, you know, we have the, the boss prototype. It's just kind of a new a new person, right? Uh, so it's just uh, constructing that that, that class. Um, so these are the new things, you know, inheritance uh, where we have contains. So we can specify other other classes from which this uh, like a new class can inherit. Um, the book didn't go into this, and also I didn't have time to look at this, but I'm sure there's a method um, for having. Um, multiple inheritance because actually the book talks about how to how dispatch is handled when there's multiple inheritance but um i i don't know how one would kind of define multiple inheritances if you're kind of inherit if you're trying to inherit from multiple classes multiple pre-existing classes um maybe a homework exercise for for me um so then we've we've defined a class um and we've we've here kind of inherited from another class um, another thing that we didn't really see too much before is how how one would kind of like instantiate um, uh, an object of a particular class. Now we we, we did see it with this function new, um, but this function new, uh, which belongs to the methods uh, the methods package uh, um, that comes with R, um, uh, you know, is really meant to be more developer oriented, right? So the uh, and, and instead what what one would want to do if one were creating an S4 class is to create a constructor function, um, or as the book calls it, a, like a helper function uh, that allows an end user to construct an instance of, of that S4 class. So here's kind of some code below where you can see both of these things happening, right? Um, where, you know, uh, you have the, the new function at play um, and this function, let's imagine we want to create a new instance of the person class. Um, so we'll just have a helper function, uh, uh, a constructor function that allows an end user to construct uh, an object of, uh, uh, of that class. Um, so here we'll, we'll define how we'll, do, we'll define that function. Um, so it'll have arguments of name and age, so uh, where the age is kind of by default uh, uh, in NA. Um, uh, we'll, we'll do some type coercion um, just to make sure that age is, is, is a double. Um, so, uh, uh, and then on the inside, what we're uh, inside of the function and the implementation is, you know, we as kind of developers are instantiating, um, you know, a, uh, a new instance of this class, person class by using the new function. So new um, referencing the class uh, and, then, and then passing elements to the slot, various slots of this, uh, of this class. So again, this person class has slots name and, name and age, um, right? So basically here you can see you have this person function, which is what the end user would use. Uh, I can create a person object, you know, pass in someone uh, as the name. And then you can see here that I, I've created an object in class person uh, with the name slot, uh, having the value of some, uh, a someone, uh, you know, as, as here. And then the uh, age being an NA, which is kind of the default uh, value from this constructor function, right? Um, so this is how one, one would go about um, providing end users uh, a means of constructing an instance of that, of that class. Um, later on, we'll, we'll see um, how this is done, maybe a more sophisticated example. Um, now, one, one problem that may arise in practice is that, um, you know, so far we're allowing end users to pass um, to pass anything to our, our the slots of our, our class. And we don't have any means so far of validating, um, or, or so it seems. Now, actually, it turns out that um, when we're defining when we're defining the class, uh, I recall when we were defining the slots, let me back up to the last section. We're defining the slots of the class. We're, we're, we're saying what class uh, of input we expect for each, each slot. So for name, we expect character. For age, we expect numeric. Um, for free, S4, this whole S4 framework provides us some basic validation where if we try to pass something of an unexpected class, we'll get an error message. So here, for example, if we try to pass um, uh, a data frame 
to the name slot, then we get an error message, you know, saying that it's that it's invalid. And this is just, you know, an error that's provided by by this this new, uh, presumably is provided by the, the new function um, uh, in in um, uh, from from the methods package. But we may want to do other things, right? So it, it kind of checks its slot, uh, you know, at creation, but it doesn't check other things we may desire, right? So we may desire, for example, you know, in this case, um, and we'll see a more sophisticated example later, you know, we may not want someone to be able to pass an uneven um, kind of a, a different number, uh, sorry, a different length of argument for each one of the slots, right? So here we'd have a person had the, um, presumably who would have two ages, right? Because all we've said is the class of the age slot is numeric. We haven't said that it needs to be a certain length, right? So here we'd have, you know, uh, and, and indeed we, we we can do this, right? So this is the result if if we if we construct uh, an object of, of of class person with our constructor function, you know, we'll have the name slot, we'll have Hadley, and the age slot will actually have a vector uh, of ages, a vector of numeric values. But that's probably not something we want. Um, luckily, S4 allows us to, to do validation and kind of at two stages, importantly at two stages of the process. You know, one at the stage of creation uh, of an instance uh, uh, of a particular class, and then also as we, as we may access particular slots to modify or update their, their values. Um, so I'll show each, each in turn. So first, you know, at, at creation. Um, so with this function, uh, one, what one can do is, is one can um, uh, use this function set validity to basically create a, a validation function um, that will be evaluated at, at time of creation of, of, of this instance. So basically for the uh, set validity function, you need to reference the class and then provide a, a function. Um, so here we're taking, we're, you know, taking the object and then we're evaluating, we're evaluating the object. We're saying, you know, if the length of the, the name slot um, and the age slot are not the same, then, then, you know, here's, here's a message, which will actually turn out to be the, the message associated with an error. Else everything's fine, right? Uh, we'll, we'll return true. So if we, come back to our example from before where we're trying to create this, this uh, instance of the person class um, with name Hadley and then kind of a, a, a you know a vector of two two ages then then we'll get we'll get an error um, I guess this first bit's maybe not so user friendly but eventually you'll see exactly the error message uh, that we that we put into our validator function, you know, at name and at age must be the same length, which is exactly what we put into our validator function. So in this way, we can guard against creating an invalid object, or um, you know, or at least what we as people who de are defining the class uh, would deem an invalid object of that class. Um, so we can do that at creation. But of course, nothing prevents people from taking the object after that point and then making changes to the object such that the object is no longer valid. Um, so luckily again, S4 provides us a means of kind of guarding against that, right? So here, you know, let's, 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 uh, let's work with names now. Um, and we'll, you know, create a, a generic function to set the value of, of the name slot. Um, and, uh, right. Uh, and then, and then define the associated methods. So here we have, you know, the, the name uh, is named generic, uh, and this is our generic function. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, a method that we're associating with it, uh, with that generic for a class person. And then here's the implementation. We're simply just accessing the value of the name slot, right? Nothing surprising there. Then, then we can, then we, we can set the value. Uh, but when we set the value, evaluate whether the object that's returned in that modification process is still a valid object. So here, you know, we've got, you know, our, our standard generic of setting, setting the value and now the, the method. Um, so, um, uh, you know, setting the method for this generic function, and here's the implementation bit um, where we're setting the value of the name slot. And then thereafter, with this valid object, we're assessing whether the object is, is, is valid. Now, the book doesn't say this explicitly, nor have I researched it 
separately, shame on me, I guess, but I, I assume that this valid object function essentially um, executes the function that we've set with the set validity right here. Um, at least it seems to be the case when, when, when we execute it. So, you know, let's kind of walk through the implementation. So we'll, we'll, we'll set the name as John Smythe. Uh, and then we can see the name as indeed John Smythe by accessing it. Now we can try to uh, update the name of John Smythe. Um, and and um, instead of giving a, uh, providing a character vector of length one, we're providing a character vector that's, you know, the length of the alphabet, right? So it's, it's character ve vector letters. Uh, and then here we see, you know, that uh, at age and at name could not, uh, it must be the same length, which is, you know, the, the error message that we, we set here with our, our validator function. Um, so this is a way that you can, uh, as as, a, as basically someone who's defining an S4 class, you can you can evaluate whether um, the S4, well, you can ensure, um, put some guardrails in place to ensure that um, the object that's that's being created by an end user is, is, is a valid object at the time of creation and then at the time at which it's modified by some methods that you provide for, for modifying the, the object. Um, you know, in this case, kind of up, updating the, the, the slots of, of, of the object. Um, right. Uh, now, um, I'll move on, I guess, to some other details. So this is kind of details on like defining the class. Um, now some details on kind of the generics and the methods. Um, there's one part I'm not going to be going over. It's the details of dispatch. I found it. I didn't have time to dig into it deeply. It, it seemed very complicated and deep. The chapter at the very outset said this is complicated, um, and I didn't I didn't go into it, um, uh, nor will I go into it here. Um, anyway, details on generics and methods. So you know, like with like with um, S three S four has a dispatch system, um, but it has an interesting dispatch system where we as as kind of those who are, you know as 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 a person who's defining the dispatch system, we can actually kind of hold, we can exert some influence over how dispatch occurs. So when we're setting our generic, um, our generic function, we can um, basically, uh, uh, you know, and our function will have some, some arguments, right? We can uh, select with what they call signature. We can use the signature. Um, so this could either be one or more arguments. By default, it's all arguments, but um, except for dot, dot, dot. If I'm not mistaken, but you can select particular arguments that can be used in determining what the class is of the object that you're passing in, so that uh, the dispatch system can kind of uh, uh, can dispatch to the right the right method for handling that that object. Uh, so here we said let's let x whatever x is you know basically this will be our our object in effect. Let the class of that thing determine how we dispatch right. So this is interesting that you can you can really you can kind of from 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 setting the generic function you can do the dispatch. Remember in S three we had to do the dispatch kind of at the level of the methods in a certain sense uh, of setting the methods. Um, and there's some rules about kind of how it traversed this uh, this kind of set of um, set of methods and, and, and selected the the right method for for, for dispatch. Um, uh, Coming back to, uh, sorry, this should be defining methods rather than generics. Um, so as, as you're defining methods, kind of the, the way, you know, the, the general form is as follows, you know, set method, name of your, your, your generic uh, function, name of a class, and then, then your implementation follows. Um, and here are a couple examples that are provided by the book that, that kind of provide a nice under, general understanding of how this works. Um, one is basically to print content, basically print in user readable format the contents of your object. Um, so here we'll have, we'll set a method show, um, show the contents of the object for our person class. Um, and, and then, and then we'll, we'll uh, do the implementation. So certain, basically this is kind of catting to the console, um, uh, the contents of the object. So in effect, we just have a formatted text where, you know, we'll have name, then the value of the name slot, new line, um, age, and then the value of the age slot. And indeed, that's what we obtained. So when we do this method, then we invoke it. Um, 
uh, just by printing the object, we, we see what we expect. So we have, actually there's one part I, I glossed over, is we, we show at the head kind of this, this text, the, type, the class of the object. There's this is function from uh, the methods package that for S4 objects returns the class, uh, basically shows the class of the object. So our, we have a personal class here. And then we're printing out um, below that um, the values of the of the slots. This is just a little bit more readable format than what is available by default. Um, and then also we can we can um, create you know a method. Can we define a method to basically access um, the name the name of, or sorry, access a slot? So again, um, I guess in R one could always access access the value of a slot in this way, but you know, I think the best practice is as a, as a person developing an S4 class to provide um, accessor functions that allow end users to access the, the values of the slots in a way in which you, you want. And maybe with some formatting that, that makes, uh, makes it easy to understand what the contents are. So for our trivial example, it's maybe not useful, but for other examples, for other use cases, it might be. So here we just, you know, set a generic function um, set a method for that generic function name. Um, and then here's our implementation. We're simply accessing the value of the slot. So we have this name function where we can uh, get the name of the object John and return John Smythe, which is what we said um, uh -huh, earlier. Right. Um, so that's, that's, that's it. All, that's all that I have for kind of overview. I want to, I guess, to move on to kind of like a case I found quote unquote, in the wild, although uh, really it was, it was a book that pointed me to this through one of the examples um, of, of, of uh, the Luberday package where you can create um, a, a, a period, kind of like a, um, a period of time. Uh, and, and I'm just gonna be kind of printing out here the, the, the source code from, from the repository. So what's interesting is we find all of the tools that we just saw at play um in more interesting form i guess so here you know uh, in, in the source code they define the class um so we you know set class um the name of the class which is going to be a period um and we uh uh here here they define the inheritance uh so actually uh, let me come back on what i said earlier here is how you handle multiple inheritance so it inherits from the time span class which i think luberdate also defines i've not left this up but i, I presume that's the case and then also from the the, the numeric class um, and then we define the slots uh, for the time components. So here you have a uh, you have a year slot, a month slot, day, hour, and minute uh, that are available in the in the period class, um, uh, time period class. They define a prototype uh, by default. So these are kind of like the default values of the object that you instantiate. Um, so you know, year is zero, month is zero, day is zero, hour is zero, minute is zero, of, unless of course, as as an end user, you set you set different values. Um, and then, and then there, remember, um, actually I didn't show this, but um, um, at least I think I didn't show this. Uh, one, when you're defining the class, you can also define the validity, uh, basically point to a function that will um, evaluate whether the, um, what, what, whether kind of, as the object is being instantiated, whether everything is, uh, is, is, is valid, right? And so there's a, a check period function, which, which we'll see in short order. So if you kind of uh, go into the source code, um, and then, then you can just kind of scroll up a little bit from this class definition and they have preceding a, a definition for, 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 you know, how to check whether the period is a valid period. Um, it's just a simple uh, function here it was interesting. I thought that here, you know, they're using just a, a, a simple R function from from kind of the form of things, not the not the uh, set uh, was it set validate uh, that we saw in the chapter. Um, not sure if there's a reason why they elected for this, um, but in any event, just wanted to point that out. Um, there's a check period function. You know, the way it starts is just an empty an empty character. Um, uh, sorry, empty vector character vector called errors. Um, and then, then, you know, there are a couple checks that, that are done here. 
Um, first, like we saw, you know, in the book example, checking that the uh, uh, checking that the length, you know, broadly like the length of every slot uh, of the object is the same, right? So the the um, turn it turns out that there's actually a um, uh, so if you don't specify slots, there's a dot data slot which contains I guess all of the data, and so here they can take the length of that whole thing. Presumably that's the uh, <coughs> So we, you know, like how, how many slots are kind of um, uh, uh, path, or oh, I guess it's the length of the longest slot. Um, um, and then and then you can evaluate the length of, uh, of each slot. So basically you can create a numeric vector where you're evaluating the length of the, the year slot, the month slot, day, hour, minute. Um, uh, and, and then if any of the lengths is not equal to the, you know, the length kind of the, the longest of all of the links, if I can put it that way, then then they construct an error message, right? That just says inconsistent links, the year is and whatever the length is, month is. So uh, as an end user, you can see what the length of each slot is uh, and then kind of react to that um, and, and create an object of valid uh, and a valid object. And then you know kind of lastly for this little segment, um, they uh, they just kind of capture all of the error messages and pass this, this created message to this class and this kind of vector of messages. Um, and then they do the same to kind of assess whether the periods are, are have integer values. And then at the end, you know, if um, if if the this uh, vector of errors is 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 is, is 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 zero, so basically it has no contents, then everything's fine. Uh, otherwise, uh, basically we'll, re we'll return this this uh, list of uh, or a uh, vector of errors. Uh, and so this is kind of you know in the wild an example of how um, you know developers are using this S4 um, or, or validating kind of an S4 object uh, as it's being kind of instantiated. Um, and then lastly, kind of on, on setting methods um, is uh, uh, you know here here they're kind of um, they're they're. Um, Defining methods, so basically just the show the show method, if you will, uh, <clears throat> if you will, the, the show method. So here we're seeing a lot of really familiar things. Um, so uh, the set method is show. Um, uh, we are seeing signature, although here it's a function. Uh, uh, it's interesting. I'll, I'll have to go look at the documentation to see you know um, what this means exactly. Um, uh, and, and then here's the implementation of the of the of the method. Um, so you know if 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 the the period has kind of like null contents has no contents, then you just print this out. Otherwise, you'll print out um, you'll print out uh, the object in a formatted way. And here, and this I also thought interesting too. They have a they have a method here for printing for for basically formatting. The object uh, as it's printed out, uh, and the way in which it looks, it looks like it's it's kind of a an S three right where you have format dot period um, uh, as as a, as a as a function here, um, and um, basically if uh, you know you'll, you'll, you'll just have you know the accessor the accessor functions uh, here, so you'll have the 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 slot year with Y, month with M, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then formatting in a certain way so that uh, so that when you we show when you show the the kind of the when you print the object, it'll be printed in a certain formatted way. Um, yeah. And here's just the source code. I tried to get a few permalink ex examples. It goes on further, but I just kind of picked out the parts of it that I thought were were interesting because they echoed exactly what we were seeing in the book. You know, here here we've got um, um, you know setting setting the class, um, our our validator function right here, check period, um, and then as you come down farther, uh, yeah, here's a set method for initializing it, uh, set method for show, uh, and then there's some there's some there's some other methods. I just picked out you know one arbitrary method just to show how it how it worked. Anyway, that's uh, that's all that I've got. Um, it was um, I, I skipped over the hard parts, um, the uh, the hard part, at least for me, being method method dispatch and this kind of um, 
in, interesting kind of um, dispatch bit here. I feel like the, there's there's a lot there's a lot of value to to this. I just I'm not far enough on my on my learning journey, uh, nor did I have enough time, I guess, to really um, internalize what 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 all what all it meant. Um, but uh, yeah, that's 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 us for. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. I actually, I don't know why this is the case, uh, Federica, but also the, the book noted that uh, the S4 classes are kind of used uh, a lot in, in kind of a biomedical, so like bioconductor, I think makes heavy use of S4. So I don't know if that's, that's, that's a little bit down your alley. Um, and, uh, and, and, and indeed kind of, you know, um, author pointed out that the beginning of the chapter, if you want to learn more about how actually to use S4 in practice, um, the public facing documentation isn't the best place to, to, to go. It's, it's uh, maybe not clear, sometimes contradictory. The better places to go are actually some of the, the, the um, I think kind of the project lead for Bioconductor um, and uh, I think John Chambers uh, uh, book or article about uh, where, where kind of S4 gets introduced. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's um, looks like a bit difficult. <laughs> so if you want to construct um, S4 object or, you know, you need to specify lots of things and things all the possible um, outcomes and set like boundaries and warnings and you know, uh, these new functions are like um, that you need to add inside when you make a function. So you make an object, and then for specifying the object as the type of object, is it? You need to to add these things with these new functions, and uh, those are all useful because when you search for information documentation about the function what is it what it does you know all those function uh, are, are informing you about the things but the set is not like quite straightforward Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for me, I think I'm I'm going to have to spend a lot of time looking at source code um, that, that uses S4. Um, I think the, to really develop kind of to, to really internalize this, I, I kind of get the broad shape of things and how it works. But let's put it this way: at, you know, in my kind of um, hop, you know, in, in my hobby of developing packages, I'm not going to be using S4 anytime soon. Uh -huh. um, uh, I mean, only only because you know, for 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 me personally, there's a bit of a kind of cognitive hurdle to clear that uh, um, that that, and I, I I think you know the, the chapter doesn't talk about this uh, you know on on purpose, as was the case with S three. Kind of the usage of this is a little bit out of scope, or like good usage of this is out of scope. But I kind of I, I kind of want to get a sense of where. S4 would be a good development pattern as, or, or, you know, where it would be a better alternative to kind of more traditional R, R code. Um, I mean, I think for these, I'm probably just going to pop the hood and, and look at some of the, uh, you know, my favorite packages and see, see actually how they, how they operate, because I, I'm, uh, I think I need to see a lot of examples and copy first before I can try, yeah. try. Can, I can try to do this. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, also true for S three and S four. I, I, um, I, I don't have a background in, uh, you know, I guess, in object oriented programming or anything. I guess outside of like statistical software packages. So, um, OOP is a little, well, it's new to me. Um, right. And um, and then then also kind of you know on top of that, leveraging it for R is, 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 is newer still. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, although it turns out all, all, a lot of my favorite packages are using it, you know, I, 
forget where I was looking the other day and I saw use method popping up all over the place. And now I realize, oh, okay, they're using S, S3. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not, yeah. As the other the other day I was trying to hunt down other examples, but, um, you know, Luberdate was one that was just kind of handed to me by the book. I, I do want to kind of step outside of that and see if there are other, mm -hmm. other, um, other users of, of kind of S, S4 that would be things that I've, I've used and feel com comfortable with, even if I don't feel comfortable with the source code yet. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the only one I understood, like quite, you know, I have in my mind an image. Of, so I could like draw uh, something in my mind and, and to, to imagine this, this kind of object. This is R6, so I can I can figure out what R6 is just thinking about a container of, of other object. Then you need to define the object inside the container. So and those objects are the key because you know if you have a box and put things inside, then the things are more articulated than just a box. So I think this to type of object like S3, S4 is very, are very important. And uh, especially if you aim to make a package with some function in it. So yeah, it takes time. Um, yeah, and I, th I think the dispatch system is the thing that's probably the most, uh, most difficult, I guess, you know, it's like, you know, writing functional, you know, writing methods in, 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 in this way may not Feel the most natural but I, I i can kind of i understand what's going on but what what's hard is figuring is developing a good intuition about um when r is going to hand control over to the method that i want it you know as a package author you know like a, you know, or kind of a, 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 a you know that i want it to have and for, for me at present, I, I feel like I don't have a good grasp, but I'm, I guess I'm just worried about the things I don't under, understand, you know, whereas the, the sort of the, this if then type logic, I understand, you know, uh, it, 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 that, that's that's easy to reason about and to follow. It's all in one place. It's fairly simple, you know, um, but, but this where there's sort of this other level of abstraction that I can't inspect as easily, this, this kind of it's kind of bothers me. And I, I actually, actually even wonder too, as like a package author, would you write, would you write test? I, I, I probably you would, right? Is you would write tests to make sure that, you know, like you construct, yeah. you can, you construct some inputs, right? And some like mock, mock uh, data. And then you see, does, does your function, you know, does your, does, does your function pass to the right, you know, does dispatch hand it over to the right method or not, you know, and, and that's kind of an additional level of, level of complexity, I guess, as, as a, for someone who's a package author, you know, first, you know, just, just there's a level of basic, you know, um, how do I call it, basic um, unit tests that are, you know, relatively straightforward to do, I guess, with just a you know basic R, but here like it's another level of abstraction, and you have to test that other level of abstraction, which I don't know. To my mind, makes things harder, not not easier. I I don't know. I, I'm I'm rambling a lot here, but it, it's I I'm kind of I guess I see theoretical value in S three S four. Um, but I'm having a hard time finding practical value. It almost seems like in terms of cost and benefit ratio in my mind right now, the costs seem larger than the benefits, but maybe it's just that I haven't imagined use cases where, um, where it's easier or better to use S3, S4 than to use, um, you know, just basic, more basic things, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay, ne next next week, um, what, what is it? Uh, it's- Trade-offs. Trade-offs. So, yeah. 
let, let, let's have a look at what, like an overview and see, conclude with this, uh, with this part somehow. Yep. No, no, not an, not an easy task uh, <laughs> when you didn't practice. Yeah. But, you know, um, we try to, to figure it out somehow. And I, I think the, the only way is to, to have uh, examples, use examples, and then, you know, dig inside an example. Um, we, we, you know, even, even if you know that when you make your own function with uh, the various specifications, things may change, but uh, at least you have that examples the example that it, 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 it's fairly understandable and uh, yeah. So, okay, uh, thank you very much for, for this, <laughs> you know, but, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I could do that uh, precisely. So, so you, you did very good. Thank Thanks. You. It, it took me it took me a while to really develop the little understanding I think I have of S4. Um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't easy, I guess, uh, is what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I console myself in the fact that uh, it seems like it's 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 everyone recognizes it as, as kind of a little complicated. Mm -mm. Yeah, a little practice. Maybe. That, that's that's the best thing. But you, when you make a package, you don't need to do the, all the, all those things. So if you if you set up a function, and that that's just a function, then anyone can get inside the function and see all the steps. So if you want to maybe prevent this this behavior or some other things, so if you want to allow for uh, options, so like different answers or different class to as I input in the function, then you need to specify all the other things. Well, anyway. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely see kind of where this where this kind of OOP type stuff comes in, where you have um, ob objects that are not simple objects that that um, you know have multiple components to them. You know, um, I think almost everything relating to time does, um, but um, yeah, uh, no, I, I think one thing I'd kind of like to see uh, or, or, or chase down uh, is, is sort of, um, I guess, package developers advice about when you would want to go for one system as opposed to another. Um, I think that would be that would be really quite interesting. I, I, I know that Hadley's uh, book on our packages is undergoing a a some some degree of a rewrite, I think, um, or, or well, an update. I, I don't know if that's that's at all envisioned for the content. I um, I'm not sure, but I think that would be kind of nice to have uh, some somewhere. Mm -mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. So thank you, and sure. uh, see you next week. See you next week. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.